Hello, hello, it's Linen. Today I'm gonna to be talking about all the impulse buy, all the books that I have been impulsively buying. This is a stack of books that I have purchased that I impulsively bought over the last month. If I get stuck in a hamster wheel through knowledge and if I get stuck thinking, oh, I need to know this, oh, I need to know this, oh, I need to know this, it'll be in the form of book buying because sometimes I buy a book thinking that I'll really need it and I'll have it, I'll get it in my possession and then hardly ever read it. So, but there's some, there always is some dose, some little nugget of information that I'll draw from the book, even if I don't read it all the time. And I think knowledge is power. I think that the more books we have and the more we read, even if it's something that we're not like actually interested in at the moment, it may turn into something that you'll, you're interested in later, or it may touch on something that will interest you later. Um, and you'll be like, oh, I have that book. And then you'll go home and you'll reference it, right? So I wanted to give a look into the books that I bought because uh, I'm, I guess I'm just so excited to have all of them in my possession, even though some of them may turn out to be books that I only skim couple of times a year. <laughs> so let's get started. Years and years and years ago, Kellyanne had this on her channel as like a book recommendation into something that will be profound for those of us interested in the con in consciousness and those interested in how that may play a role, how human consciousness and therapy have some like a, a sort of symbiotic relationship. And it says for anyone who's ever been on either side of the couch. And I think that for me, when I read certain things like, like certain things like this, um, in terms of nonfiction, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of watching those documentaries about serial killers and how their brain works and how, I don't know, it's like psychopaths versus sociopaths and stuff like that. It, it fills me with that type of, of, of uh, learning, it sends me down, like, I want to know about what's happening scientifically and even academically as well. And I believe that this will be a good reference. Um, she seemed to love it in that book, uh, in that video that she was mentioning it. And I, these are personal accounts of psychotherapy, like instances through psychotherapy. And I, I really think that this is going to be one of those books that once you read it, it'll stick into your brain. So, and then I have been studying, uh, of course, you know, I've been doing symbolism and <clears throat> when studying the lust card, which I have a whole separate video on for my thought symbolism videos, I'm doing a whole video on the lust card and Crowley's portrayal of the lust card was the whore of Babylon, the scarlet woman from Revelations. And throughout my research, I found that there was an organization called the Temple of Our Lady of the Abyss that's dedicated to Babylon and dedicated to that form of feminine, that form of feminine as bana, as understanding. And they had put forth their very first publication, this temple, this organization, had put forth their very first publication into a journal of sorts. They've taken various short stories and poetry and prose from different members of this temple and made it into a book, into a published book. And uh, there are there is some artistic nudity in here, so I want to forewarn you about that. But this book is called Mara. Mara means the bitter sea. It is the most ancient and forgotten name of Our Lady, the mother and the lover, goddess of sex and death. Mara signifies the twisting duality of the divine feminine. She is the essence of form, the Na, splendor, the realm of Saturn, Mara signifies the inexorable logic that birth leads to death, and that is most beautiful, most necessary, will fade. It's just beautiful. I'm going to show you the cover because when you, they tell you not to judge a book by its cover, I don't think that's always true because the cover of this book really spoke to me and it, it just, it told me that this, this journal was going to be, this, this collection of, of accounts was going to be profound. Look at this image, this painting, this monochromatic painting with this bright, vibrant pomegranate in the center here. 
I just thought, oh, I need this. If nothing but to have this image in my possession. <laughs> and I saw myself in this image. This, this figure looks a lot like me. And I found that to be very emotional. But these are personal accounts. Um, like I said, poetry, short stories, prose of different members. And they even have, like, say this short story was written by this person. And they also drew this or painted this, this picture. They've included those as well. So there's paintings and drawings. And uh, like I said, the poetry in here is so good. Uh, this story was really good. There's just short stories and uh, these are tarot drawings. That's so cool. But anyway, this temple meets here in Atlanta where I live and the proceeds of this book also went to a charitable organization. It's like a homeless shelter for homeless teens of the LGBTQ community and I thought that that was a profound charitable association and that I'm, I'm from Atlanta it just seemed like more of a connection for me and the accounts and the art in here oh, filled me with such a, a more love of the divine feminine and more study into the divine feminine and I think it's important to note others' personal accounts with things because it reminds you that your practice is yours and Though that person's practice is totally different and it's okay to be different. Uh, and then I, I purchased, uh, I purchased two poetry books. One is Theodora Goss's Songs of Ophelia. There was a poem that I, I fell in love with of hers. I've been reading her poetry for years now. And there was a poem that I fell in love with about a wife and a husband and how the wife was a witch and how the husband how the husband dealt with some of her witchy things in the relationship and it was humorous but it just filled me with so much emotion and how there was just something about the pagan tree with her poems that pulled me in and I finally found Songs of Ophelia, Ophelia uh, a collection of sorts of, of some of her sacred poetry and she's so I mean this poetry is so good I, I just like the witch wife this is the poem that I fell in love with and I had to get the collection that had that poem in it <laughs> but I, I I just love her poetry and so I, I love having poetry in my possession it just fuels something in me it fuels inspiration in me now this one was kind of an impulse buy because I don't normally read because uh, I had never read this person before and it's Norman McGaig and he's a Scottish man and his poetry is about his love of Scotland and his love of landscape and it's basically he's writing down his love and what it looks like to him what nature looks like to him and his love of Scotland as a country and I think that some of these I, I can I can smell the waves and I can visit the locks with him uh, and I just love that but I have a whole other separate video on poetry so I'm not gonna go in that today then I got this. I have been listening to some Hildegard von Bingen who has, who was a nun. I think she was a mother superior figure in her church and she had visions. She was more of a, uh, she had some sort of, there was a philosophy about her that there, there was something philosophical about her and her visions and her illuminations and her drawings that pulled me in, pulled me into knowing uh, the Sophia of wisdom, the Mother Mary, Mother Magdalene, uh, the role of feminine in church and how I've had a lot of healing and shadow work with that. And I really, really liked how she spoke about that, spoke about those things. And Matthew Fox is probably the most famous author to put her, her to translate her work. Now, like I said, she, she, there's drawings and then there's compositions, musical compositions. She believed that the role of the feminine in the church, like in the nunnery, was different than that of the monastery. And she had to change some of the chants to 
to, for the feminine aspect, for the feminine role in the church and how that was different. And she came up with them all by herself. And I was, as listening to that, I wondered, I, I guess I got curious and I just I bought this on impulse because I thought, okay, yeah, we need to dive into this. I need to, this is probably her most famous illumination that was in a manuscript. And it's these octopus like things coming down her head and this scribe here listening to her in this trance-like state, and she's also doing some kind of drawing or maybe she's writing something down, and they're inside this church, but she's having a vision from the divine and what that looked like to her. I thought that this drawing really conveyed what that was. Now, she has a couple of these uh, micro and macrocosm illuminations. I love this one's probably my favorite. It's called the egg of the universe. This yoni shape. There was a reason why she put this in the middle, the moon here. There's a specific number of flowers. Um, Jesus is present in all of them. I love how she writes herself down here drawing this down here in the corner. I love that. Um, there's just, there's so many chap good chapters in here on how she interprets her visions and how she talks about them and her renderings are profound. And I believe this to be a good resource for me in healing the feminine that was, that was hurt growing up. It will have a place in that. So it's been really good for that. Now I got some Crowley books. And when I was studying the Goetia and the Thoth and the Enochian magic and things like that, I picked this up on an impulse because I could just look this stuff up online. It's not like I needed it in my possession. But to have a like, physical account of the Lesser Keys of Solomon, to really look at the sigils and not be looking at a computer screen for number one, but also to have them so I don't have to bookmark every single thing that I look at online. But... There, I mean, this is Crowley's uh, along with M uh, McGregor Mathers, but I don't think that this exact rendition is the most popular of the Lesser Keys of Solomon. I'm not sure. But there's so many charts and sigil magic within this work that I, I'm going to, I'm going to find that it's going to help me on my thought journey. If anything, it'll help me expand my magic practice not that I'm a ceremonial magician but I believe that learning about magic and learn and expanding and and gaining certain knowledge of of certain magical practices will help in my own journey look at all the secret symbolism anyway so I got that one and I got the book of lies now this reads uh pretty pretty weird it seems to be like Crowley, uh, Crowley's prose, almost like little snippets and little nuggets of knowledge that he, it was like a thought that he had and he wrote it on a scrap piece of paper or something and then wrote it down, but didn't have enough on this one thing like lambskin to write a whole novel. So he just compiled all of his little nuggets into this one work of art here. So, and there's even some commentary that he wrote about them. So I thought that that was pretty cool that when we read this, we can also read the commentary and how the commentary may relate to, like this one relates to the Kabbalah, Gematria, things like that. I even tagged that because that's Babylon. And all of, some of them are really like way out there. Like maybe he was in a trance when all this was happening. Maybe he was, you know, like under the influence of something. I don't know. It just, it, I, I just for some reason thought that I needed this Crowley work in my possession. Now, this is the Crowley work that I've been wanting for so long. And it was really, I wanted Libra 777. But this is Gematria, Sefer Sephiroth, and 777. So it's just a whole tome of things. Now, I, I did learn that the only thing I've learned on how to read this is that the charts read from right to left, not left to right. So that's kind of been iffy, but I need to learn how to read this book. They do talk about um, Gematria alphabet in terms of Hebrew letter and English letters, and then how it relates to back to numbers. <laughs> so that's been kind of cool, but I feel very unqualified to read this. I feel like I don't know how to read this. So I've been skimming it and I've been saying, oh, well, if this is this on the Zodiac, then what may that mean? And I'll look it up and, and try to figure out how, how it relates in, in these terms. 
and it doesn't always work. So I'm going to continue to sit with it and, and just have it as a resource and a, and a very good material. I've, I've, I've read before that Crowley and Wait both used the, this Libra 777 in terms of tarot. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how I interpret it and if that's even possible. So I knew I needed that in my possession. And then I was studying up on magic because of the other works of books that I got. And I have a couple of other Lon Milo Duquette books because I love his writing style and I love how humorous he is. A lot of people don't drive with him, but I do. I find his stories and his personal accounts into his magic just hilarious. I find that when he is humorous, the information comes across a little bit better. It's like having a conversation with a friend and they throw a joke in every so often. And it just kind of makes the conversation in interesting, not just like you're getting lectured. So I just, I feel like, you know, he's just one of the boys. And so I picked this up as a, another guide into my magic practice. It was allow me to introduce an insider's guide to the occult. <laughs> And yes, he's, he is very knowledgeable. He talks about Crowley. He talks about the Kabbalah, the tree of life. And I've looked in this so many times. I haven't read it cover to cover because I don't read reference material that way. But when I am wanting to dive into something about magic and it's not uh, something I'm actively doing, like it's not part of ritual or anything. It's just like part of my learning my learning stage in magic. Uh, I'll pick this and a couple more books up. It goes on the tarot. I mean, uh, uh, the Lima, of course, no duh. Anokian magic. I mean, there's just so much here. And it is an insider's guide because he doesn't go into every single damn thing. But I think that he goes into enough that you'll get some knowledge out of it and how some of these seem you know how these chapters relate to your magic practice how it relates to tarot how all of them tie together and I've, I've been finding this a really good resource then all of those books had me diving into the thoth more for self because i used that i used the thoth for me anyway but for a week straight a couple of weeks ago i was reading it for self and something about the, the spreads that i was using or the cards that would come up, I kept thinking about the tree of life and I kept scrying on the tree of life. And uh, you'll, you'll see why I'm cheeky about that in a second. I was scrying with the tree of life. I was uh, making connections with the tree of life and the tarot, diving more into it. And then I found this book. This lovely tome by Israel Regardi. This is the only Israel Regardi book that I own when he has so many other books, good books out there. I do want his Golden Dawn book. Um, just because I think that that'll help on my tarot, my tarot learning journey as a whole, like with Rider Waite system or the Thoth system. And he has a couple of books that are on something specific. Like he's got the Philosopher's Stone, which is on alchemy. And then he had Tree of Life and he's got Golden Dawn, whatever, whatever. There was just something about that week that just kind of stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed. I was like, oh, okay, okay. So then I realized that there was a lot of the tree of life I didn't know. And of course, you know, because we're eternal, I'm an eternal student. I'm just going to constantly learn. But this tome had it all. I mean, descri descriptions of the Sifros, descriptions of the path, the, the upper, middle, and lower world of the tree of life, and what those mean, the, the four worlds of the golden dawn. Um, there's this, it happens to be illustrated, so that's always great. Um, I mean, this, this book just had it all uh, on the tree of life to me, uh, see, you know, like I know no different, right? I love these illustrations, Adam and Eve. So that he goes into the creation story, which y'all, if y'all watched any of my other videos, you know that I love researching and interpreting the creation story the way I need to for my magical practice. But there's so much good stuff here. I was looking at the introduction. Uh, Cause you know when you order something off Amazon, and if you hit the Kindle, like if you click Kindle on the drop down bar, you can have a look see inside. So I was looking at the entry, like the table of contents up front, and I thought, oh, okay, okay. I got like halfway through, halfway through, 
like History, Pitt, Sifros Pass, Adam Cadman, which I believe to be the Primordial Man, the Literal Kabbalah, Kabbalah Continued, the Ladder, which I think is the Journey of the Tree of Life, Rituals, Lower Realm, Middle Realm, and Upper Realm. Then, of course, the illustrations are cited. But I, did, I got like halfway through that damn table of contents and I was like, yep, need to have this. And this will be the resource that I continue to go to. It's going to be like a coffee table book for me. Like whatever I'm diving into, I'll pick this up and see if what I am researching or this tarot spread, what could this mean in terms of tree of life and stuff like that. I just think that this is going to be so expansive. It's just going to be great. And it's green, which is my favorite color. <laughs> Annie calls it the garden of pomegranates, which... <sighs> fills me with love of the High Priestess card from the Rider-Waite-Smith system. <laughs> and then the last book that I purchased, which not like I haven't purchased a shit ton of books thus far, <laughs> but the last book I purchased was this. I had no idea that I needed this book in my possession. I was looking up something of the tarot for a video, and this, it was showing one of the, um, it was referencing something in here. Like when I Googled it, this book's PDF file or whatever came up and I thought, what the hell is this? I said, holy shit, what is this? What is this? And I thought, oh my God, this is a book. This isn't some like paper written. This is a whole tome of shit. And it's just like one of them things. So T. Susan Chang, Tarot Correspondences. Now, I could have bought any book. I could have bought Holistic Tarot. I could have bought whatever the other popular ones are. I think I've only, I only own 78 Degrees of Wisdom. I do most of my learning online. I, I, th I did most of my learning online. I mentioned in another video that I had like Tarot for Beginners from the library. That helped. I ordered some books from the library. But like I said, I've never bought any. So... I just didn't know that I needed this. When they say, when they, when whoever talks about layers of the tarot, right? I like learning about the layers of tarot, as you guys know. But there was something about this book that really dove into the layers. Let's add all the systems, Marseille, Thoth, and Rider Waite, and all of them have layers. What are all the layers across all the boards? This person puts them all in here. Tables, charts, astrology, ooh, natural correspondences, tree of life, numerical. I mean, oh God. So, so good. Plants. I mean, who knew that this shit had, like, tarot could have plant associations. Now they got me wondering, is mustard or a sunflower inside of the wand suit like stuff like that it's got me thinking about that crystals daikons hello of course anything about the zodiac we know that that's a huge layer in the sandwich but i mean so much so much uh that this will be along with my garden of pomegranates book will just stay on my coffee table for now from now on and I will love it and cherish it as a resource so those are my <laughs> impulse buys for the month uh I haven't bought anything else but books so you know there you go that just seems to be where my love goes when I want to spend money I tend to do it that way um on stuff uh not like not normal things but on my like my extras in my extras budget I tend to go more the book route. So these are my impulse buys and I wanted to share them with you guys. If, what have you been impulse buying? Has being in this pandemic caused you to impulse buy anything? What is your favorite thing to impulse buy? <laughs> Tell me in the comments below. Tell me if you've read any of these, you know? Do you have any, any insights into reading some of these resource materials? And I hope to see everyone again. Much love.